Hallelujah. Are you well today? Kwa sawa leo. You are glad you are here. Furahia uko hapa. Give your neighbor high five tell them thank you for coming. Hebu msalimie salamu za juu jirani yako mwambie asante kwa kuja. And you look great. Na mnakaa vyema. Then you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Naweza kaeni katika uwepo wa Bwana. Today started a little bit chilly. Leo ikaanza na baridi kidogo. So the weather was not very good for church goers. Kwa hivyo hali ya anga haikuwa nzuri sana kwa wale waendao kanisa. But the believers had to come. Lakini waamini lazima wangefika. So clap for yourself for making it. Kwa hivyo jishpigie makofi kwa kufika. You had many reasons not to come. Ulikuwa na sababu nyingi za kukosa kucha. But you chose to come anyway. Lakini ukaamua kwamba utakuja. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to bring you greetings from Bishop Dr. Jimmy Kimani. Naletee salamu za askofu ah uh, Daktari Jimmy Kimani. And our mom Pastor Alice Kimani. Na Pastor Alice Kimani. They have passed their love to you. Wameweza kupitisha upendo wao kwao. They are out of town today. Hawako, hawako leo siku ya leo. And it's good to be out of town sometimes. Ni vizuri yeah? kukosa tu kuweko uh, mjini wakati they, mwingine. They want you to know they love you. Wataka kujua kwamba wanawapenda. They care about you. Wanawashughulikia. And they are praying for you. Na wanawaombea. Have you received their greetings? Je, umepokea? Is that how you receive greetings? Je, unapokea hivyo? <laughs> All right, uh, maybe we shall attend that class. You don't know whether to clap, whether to say I've received. Uh, but it's okay. Ni sawa. You receive, eh? Umepokea? Ah, uh, okay, okay. How many of us are uh, visitors? This is the first time you have come. Je, ni wangapi wetu ni wageni? Hii ni mara yako ya kwanza kuja. You've never been here before. Haujawa mahali hapa tena. This is the first time you checked in here. Ni mara yako ya kwanza kukuja. Come on, there is one visitor over there. Kuna Where is the yako other pale. one? Kuna mge- there is another one, another kuna one, another one. Kuna mwingine mahali hapa, kuna wengine pale pia nyuma. Another we have so many visitors. Tuko na wageni wengi sana. Please just stand so that we see Ebu some people are stretching. Some people are stretching to see you. Watu wengine wanakazana kuwaona. Hebu simama tu. Let's appreciate our visitors. Wacha tuwashangilie wageni wetu. Amen. Amen. One, two, three. Yesu akupenda, anipenda na sisi sote. Kuna watu wanauma mdomo kwa nini? Amjapata kwaya, amku attend classes. Let's do it one more time. One, two, and three. Je- Amen. Yesu akupenda, anipenda na atupenda sisi sote. All of us. Thank you very much for coming. Asante sana kwa kuja. If you are visiting somebody here, kama umetembelea mtu Amen. We've heard from the news. Tumesikiza kutoka kwenye habari. We've been having revival meetings. Ya kwamba kuna mikutano ya ufufuo. From 25th to 27th. Kutoka tw- tarehe 25 hadi 27th. That date in your calendar. Hebu kaiandike kwenye kalenda yako. Because it's going to be a life transforming season. Kwa sababu itakuwa wakati mwema wa kubadilisha. Bishop David Bulimo all the way from Busia will be coming. Askofu Bulimo kutoka pale Busia ataja. And you cannot afford to miss. Na hawezi kosa. Tell your neighbor 25th of April. 25 mwezi wa 4. Eh, tell you some people are looking at I'm not your neighbor. Your neighbor is Jirani yako ni yule umekati karibu na yeye. And if you don't like him you can change your Kama unaona hampendi unaweza badilisha kiti. Yeah, yeah, rather than uh, keeping quiet. Badala ya kuvumilia. Amen. Amen. I like to as to read God's word now. Ningependa tusome neno la Mungu. I'll be reading Romans chapter 5. Mtakuwa nasoma Warumi 5. Ah verse 1 and 2. Warumi 5:1 2. So you can open your Bibles to Romans 5. Kwa hivyo utafungua Biblia yako Warumi 5. Verse 1 and 2. Moja na mbili. And I've seen a very good practice somewhere. Na nimeona mahali jambo nzuri likitendeka. Where people stand when they read God's word. Wakati watu wanasimama wakilisoma andiko. I think we can adopt it. Ngine ningeuliza tukaweze kuishikilia hiyo mtindo. 
Let's turn to read God's word. Wacha tusimame tusome andiko. 1 Let's go. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2 Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. I'd like us to go back and now read while thinking about the words. Chapter verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Give us Swahili now. Swahili speakers. Kiswahili, tafadhali. Ah, uh, Swahili. Sasa, kwa vile tumefanywa kuwa waadilifu kwa imani, basi tunayo amani na nae mungu kwa njia ya wanawetu Yesu Kristo. Kwa imani yetu, yeye ametuleta katika hali hii ya neema ya mungu, ambamo sasa tunaishi. Basi tunajivunia tumaini tulilo nalo la kushiriki utukufu wa mungu. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We pray for illumination of your word. The entrance of your word brings light. And understanding to the simple. We pray that our mind shall be illuminated. To see the truth in your word. Thereby we might be set free. In Jesus' name. We pray. Kwa jina la Yesu tuwaomba. Say amen. Sema amen. And with a good smile you can be seated. Ukiwa umetabasamu basi uketi. In the presence of the Lord. Katika uwepo wa Bwana. The letter that we have read barua is a letter of Paul ni barua ya Paulo to the Romans. Kwa Warumi. Paul wrote many epistles. Paulo akaandika barua nyingi. And among those epistles, we have around 24 epistles Ziko in the word. Kama na nne, and he has written almost 14 of them. Na kama kumi na zote. Many to the churches that he founded. Kanisa, kaswa sana kwa kanisa alizo anzilisha. I just like to give you a little background of the book of Romans before we go to the two verses Ni kupatie tu uh, uh, mambo kidogo kusiana na warumi. Maybe it might also assist as you do a study in the book of uh, the letter of Paul to the Romans. Itatusaidia uh, kuelewa sana barua hiyo ya Paulo so kwa warumi. So Paul was writing to the Roman church. Akawa na wandikia warumi. Most of the letters he wrote Barua nyingi alizoandika was to the churches that he founded. Zikawa kwa kanisa alizozianzisha. But he also wrote so many letters. Lakini pia akaandika barua nyingi to the Philippi church at Philippi which is the Philippians. Kanisa pale Filipi ambayo ni wa Filipi. Ephesus, Ephesians. Wa Efeso. And many other letters. Na zinginezo nyingi to in Greece and uh, those that region. Pale ugriki na kule kule amali pale. Mainly the the churches that he had founded. Kusua sana kanisa alizoanzisha. But he also wrote a letter to Colos, the Lag, Colossians. Lakini pia akaandika barua kwa wakolo, yani wa Colossia. A letter that uh, a church that he did not found. Kanisa ambalo hakuwa ameanzisha. The second letter he wrote was Romans. Ili lingine aliloandika ni Warumi. A church he did not found. Kanisa ambalo hakulianzisha. In in fact, by the time he was writing this letter, he had not yet gone to Rome. So he was writing a letter before he goes there. That's why he tells them that I long to come to you. He was writing this letter while he was at Corinth. Because from Corinth, he intended to go back to Jerusalem. 
because he had collected some alms from the church. Kwa sababu alikuwa amepata vitu kidhaa kwa kanisa. And he wanted to take them over to Jerusalem. Na akawa anataka kuzipeleka pale Yerusalemu. To give to those that were need in the church. Kupatia wale ambao walikuwa na mahitaji so kanisa. He writes a letter to the Romans. Kwa basi yaandikia Warumi barua. He gives to Phoebe to take it before he goes there. Anampatia Phoebe apeleke kabla hajaenda pale. Now his epistle to the Romans. Ile barua yake kwa Warumi is a little bit different from the other epistles that he has written. Ya tofautiana kwa kiwango kutokana na zile zingine alizoandika. This epistle is a treatise. Kwa sababu hii andiko ni kama makubaliano. A treatise is like a discussion. Ni kama kuongea. It's like an argument. Ni kama ile, ile mpingano It's kiasi. It's like a dissertation. Uh, ni kama ile kukuwa na, na masomo. It's like a thesis. Ni kama uh, andiko la kisomo. It's making an investigative study into a subject. Ana, anafanya ucho, uchocholezi And katika andiko fulani. And to expound some things that hitherto were not yet known to that church. Na akijaribu kuelezea mambo wa kadha wa kadha ambao so kwa kanisa lile. He lies to the Roman church. Kwa hivyo anaandikia wa uh, wa Romi. But though it is distinctive. Lakini hata kama ina tofauti. It still bears the common features of a letter that Paul was writing. Inafanana kiasi na barua Paulo alikuwa anaandika. Because every time he writes a letter. Kwa sababu kwa kila wakati andika po barua. He introduces himself. Anajitambulisha mwenyewe. He says Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ. Anasema Paulo mtumishi wa Yesu Kristo. Paul a servant of Jesus Christ. Yaani Paulo mtumishi wa Yesu Kristo. Paul a born servant. Paulo aliyezaliwa wa kutumika. He says Paul an apostle according to the will of God. Ana sema kwamba Paulo mtume kulingana na mapenzi ya Mungu. So he starts with an introduction of himself. Hivyo basi yaanza na kujitambulisha. Then as it is common with Paul. Na kama ilivyo kawaida ya Paulo. He says that he is praying for them. Asema awaombea. He says I have been praying for you. Kwa nimekuwa nikiwaombea nyinyi. He mentioned this in most of his letters. Anasema hivi katika andiko zake zote. If you read Ephesians 1:15 he says. Wa Efeso 1:15 you asema. Since I heard of your love for the saints niliposikia upendo wenu kwa Kristo na imani yenu kwa Mungu I see not to make, sure, make mention of you in my prayers sitakosa kuwatambulisha kuwatambua katika maombi yangu thanking God for you nikimshukuru Mungu kwa ajili yenu so the same way he's praying for the Ephesian church hivyo basi vile vile anavyoombea wa Efeso he's also praying for the Roman church pia awaombea kanisa la Warumi after his normal salutation baada ya salamu zake za kawaida Paul starts to explain the reason you are anza paulo kuelezea sababu why he is even an apostle in the first place kwa sababu kwa sababu gani yeye ni mtume kwanza and the reason for that is because of the gospel kwa sababu hiyo kwa sababu ni uh, ya injili that jesus was given to us ya kwamba yesu kapatiwa kwetu so that those who are accursed ili kwamba waliolaaniwa can be the chosen of god wakawa waliochaguliwa wa mungu so paul is a carrier of good news kwa hivyo paulo ni mbeba ji ama chombo cha habari njema And in verse 16 of chapter 1 he says for I am not ashamed of the gospel 16 pale moja anasema siaibiki injili for it is the power of God unto salvation sababu ni nguvu ya Mungu katika wokovu first to the gentiles kwanza kwa wale wa gentile first to the Jews then to the gentiles kwanza kwa wajiu na wale wa gentile And so he starts to speak about the gentiles or the pagans or the heathens. Anaanza kuongelea wale wa kidunia ama wale wa kidunia. And he says the heathens have been blinded in their eyes. Anasema kwamba wamefungwa kwa macho yao. Even though God gave them the choice. Ya kwamba Mungu japokuwa akawapatia uamuzi. Or the gift of free choice. Yaani ile kuwa na uwezo wa uamuzi. They decided not to choose God. Wanaamua kwamba hawatamchagua Mungu but they walked in their own imagination. Lakini wanatembea kwa fikra zao. In fact he says they walked under unrighteousness. Hata anasema ya kwamba wanatembea katika a uh, a uh, uh, kukosa yani uchafu ama kukosa That instead of worshiping the creator ya kwamba badala ya kumwabudu aliyewaumba they started to worship the creation walianza, or the creatures walianza kuabudu maumbile and gave themselves to worshiping of idols na wakajipatia kuabudu mifa, mifano and because they chose not god kwa sababu walikataa kumchagua mungu god has given them up mungu amewapeana and paul list, uh, list three things na Paulo yuataja mambo matatu that God gave them two 
ya kwa Mungu aliyowapatia kwayo. One, God gave them to uncleanliness. Kwanza Mungu akawapatia kwa kukosa kuwa wasafi. So they started walking in the lusts of their hearts. Wakaanza kutembea kwa tamaa ya mili yao. Secondly, ya pili, God gave them to vile passions. Mungu akawapatia tamaa or vile affections. Yaani tamaa zisizo za kawaida. Now they had affections that were not human. Walikuwa na tamaa ambazo si za kibinadamu. They started having passions upon women. Wamama wanakuwa na tamaa kwa wamama. And men started having passions for men. Wamama waume nao pia wanatamani waume wengine. Those who are vile passions. Hiyo ilikuwa tamaa zisizo za kawaida. Thirdly he says, Hatu anasema, God gave them over to depraved minds. Akawapatia kwa fikra zisizo fikiria. Or debased minds. Uh, yaani fikra zisizo na mawazo. They were not thinking straight. Wapo wanafikiria Vema. The, their mind was below their status Fikra or capacity. Fikra sao zikawa chini ya hali yao. Because they did not choose God. Kwa sababu hawakumchagua Mungu. So verse 1 uh, chapter 1 basically is talking about the heathen. Kwa hivyo ya kwanza inaongea kuhusu walio